Hi everyone, this is Nelly Mensa with SF Cryptocurrency Devs and today we're talking to Abra. Hi you guys. Do you want to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what you do at Abra? Sure. So my name is Ishmael uh, and I joined Abra almost four years ago. Uh, I was one of the first engineers and pretty much that whole time I've been focused on building our infrastructure, uh, working with transactions and making Abra see what it does. Hi, my name is Willie, and I'm the head of product engineer at Abra, and I've been at Abra for about a year. Very cool. So I just found this out recently, but apparently Abra stands for a better remittance app. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how it evolved from being that to an investment in a wallet app and came to compete with uh, Robinhood and Bread and a few others? Sure. Um, Willie can probably talk more about the recent change, but uh, since I was there at the beginning, I. Uh, I know we were focused on remittances because we thought that that's a very important problem to solve right. in the world and uh, something that cryptocurrency should should be able to solve. But in my mind, what turned out is that that's not what people really are using cryptocurrencies for right now. What they really want to do is just invest in them. Sure. Uh, and on a side note about the name, uh, I, I know that people say that it stands for a better remittance app, but I've always thought of it as just meaning abracadabra, because like, it's magic and that's what we do. <laughs> Yeah, so at Abra, we make magic happen. We want to hide all the complexity of the crypto and then just provide a very simple user experience for our users. But in terms of the remittance to uh, investment, our ultimate vision is really to build an open system, a financial system that's accessible to people globally on top of crypto. Right. And it just turns out that the investment case is, just like Ish said, right. the best case to, to, to approach that right now. So we want to make investing in crypto open and accessible to everybody. Totally. So you mentioned the user, Willie. I'm kind of curious, who is your perfect Abra customer and how big do you think the market is right now? Yeah, so right now we're focused on what we're calling the active uh, crypto investor. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually we want to really move to what we're calling the un uninitiated, right? right? The normal mom and pops, right? But in terms of who's really investing in crypto right now are people that are you know, somewhat initiated, they're investing maybe one or two uh, uh, coins, and that's the, the target persona that we're going after. And after that, we're gonna, we really wanna make the app simple enough for the everyday user, for the mom and pop, for the retail consumer. Sure. Awesome, so switching gears a little bit, you mentioned your background in engineering, uh, the app is growing. Can you tell us a little bit more about the types of engineers you look for, what talents and skill sets you're hoping that they'll bring to the team? Yeah, so um, the majority of our core backend is written in Scala, so and it's really hard to find good Scala engineers, so we're always looking for that. Um, but really what we want is people who have a good understanding of uh, cryptocurrencies, blockchains, and uh, this new technology, because those, those are people are even harder to find. Um, but we also do a lot of stuff with Java, and in our client-side apps, we have iOS sure. and Android. Yeah, and are there any particular milestones or projects that you're hoping your new team members will tackle? So right now we're really interested in bringing just a lot more uh, cryptocurrencies native. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just people who are able to either know about um, cryptocurrencies, and make the intricacies of uh, making them work on our in our architecture, um, yeah. or who can dive into that stuff and learn it quickly. Yeah, we're also looking for you know anybody that are new new to the space, that are really good engineers, that are interested in blockchain. There's not a lot of uh, talent resource right. out there, so. We're willing to take on people that are just good engineers and you know teaching them about crypto, teaching them about sure. blockchain, and, and that's that's great also. Yeah, and then what, what do you recommend for people who are you know maybe coming in with an engineering background but maybe don't necessarily feel comfortable being called a crypto developer? Right, I would say just start uh, start investing. Right, uh, start uh, you know understanding how the crypto investment space works, uh, play around with the, the different exchanges, the centralized one and the decentralized ones. I think Ether is a good place to start with all the different decentralized apps and easy programming via sort of JavaScript and, and, and the web. Uh, we, you know, we're currently on a big project where we want to take Ether mm -hmm. native so that nice. we can uh, extend all of our assets to the ERC-20 tokens and yep. all the Ether-related uh, capabilities, assets. So, so that would be a good place yeah. to start. That's awesome. And then looking a couple of years ahead, are there any particular problems in the blockchain space that you're hoping someone will solve? It doesn't have to be your team, but anyone mm -hmm. else that you think will really help with either adoption or scalability? Well, so one of the things that a lot of people talk about that I think is interesting is uh, decentralized exchanges. That is obviously a big place of innovation. Um, and then 
Yeah, and then there's a lot of little details around scalability, yeah. especially in Bitcoin. There's like these new things like Schnorr and yeah. uh, you know, Mast and this different stuff. Um, but if anyone can crack the really crack proof of stake and proof that it works, that would be interesting to see. I mean, there's yeah. just so many interesting avenues, so it's hard to pick just one. Yeah, I think for me, uh, for me, ultimately comes down to the maturity of the blockchain. I think Bitcoin's already very secure. Uh, there's other similar blockchains that are secure, but it's really about transaction output and the scalability of that. Yep. Uh, because while keeping the mining fees low, yep. right? So how can you keep the cost relatively reasonable and having the transaction yep. output of a sort of Visa or Mastercard? Like sure. I know there's Lightning, all kinds of right. uh, uh, projects out there, but I think I think that that ultimately will then bring remittance and payment yeah. and, and, and other type of uh, use cases into the fold. Totally. Yeah. So Opera is a huge player in the space. I'm kind of curious, are you doing anything to support this kind of development? Uh, maybe encouraging your developers to participate in open source communities or doing something internally in-house? Yeah, that's uh, definitely something we want to do is be more of a you know, contributor to the open, yeah. source, open source ecosystem. Um, we do use open source tools, obviously. Um, so hopefully we'll see a lot of that in the yeah. near future. I think, I think some, I mean, something we do is uh, we're, for example, we're very close to one of the uh, Stanford cryptographer professors, Dan Bowen. That's where I learned crypto. Oh, well. okay, yeah. great, yeah. And so, so some of the things we talked about, for example, in this uh, uh, you know, particular uh, meetup was how do we have uh, amended contracts? Right, yep. smart contracts without touching the blockchain. Right. Right. And if you do that, then obviously there's less congestion. And how do we so, so those are different ways we can scale and we'll obviously share those techniques yeah. to to other people so that uh, we can be smart about how to really leverage the blockchain resources when we need it. Totally. Very cool. Thank you, Ali and Ish. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you now.